Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna go over the Titanic data set in Kaggle, which is basically the first competition or the beginner competition for machine learning in general and really implementing like uh, these data sets and uh, implement implementing different algorithms and models to really classify data. So um, this, this video is mainly gonna be for me, uh, just in case that I forget how a lot of these uh, different like uh, models work but it's also it can also help other people to get a score of a 90 90 percent on the titanic model which is actually really good because uh, in my first two tries i didn't get a 90 percent in fact i got below an 80 percent which was uh kind of weird but before i uh go, go in depth into this and uh i want to give credit to vk underscore ds uh for helping me with some some of the code and um yeah so let's before we start i'm just going to talk about what i'm going to really go over which is first the introduction then i'm going to talk about how to load the data then i'm going to talk about filling filling in missing values and then uh the engineering part modeling and then lastly the prediction so let me just check if I'm okay. I'm recording. Yeah, I thought I was streaming. Okay, so for the introduction, first you have to actually know what this data is e even going to be used for. So the sinking of the Titanic is one of the most uh, infamous shipwrecks in history. It happened on April uh, April fifteenth, nineteen twelve, nineteen ninety twelve, and during this voyage, the Titanic sank after colliding with an iceberg. Killing fifteen fifteen hundred and two I mean fifteen wait no one thousand five hundred and two people out of two thousand two hundred and twenty uh twenty four passengers and crew. So that's why the name is called Titanic instead of Titanic. Um hopefully that was a really dark joke, but I'm not gonna laugh about that. And yeah, so it was a really unforgettable disaster that no one in the world can forget. So it took about $7.5 million to build the Titanic, and it sunk under the ocean due to the collision. So in this Titanic data set, uh, we're gonna, it's a really good data set for beginners, and we're going to start, uh, it's basically a start to the journey of data science to participate in many competitions, inclu including Kaggle, and it can be the starting po point for machine learning as a whole, uh, so you can get into different fields like finance and whatnot there's many other fields even medical even uh healthcare fields um yeah so i'm just going to talk about how to predict mod the modeling problem and uh make sure that we understand the machine learning concept concepts and make sure I, I understand it as well in the future when i'm looking at this code like completely startled so okay let's start so basically, obviously, the first thing you want to do is import numpy, pandas, matplotlib, matplotlib.pilot, and seaborn, and all that stuff. And then, yeah, as we go down, we're obviously going to import sklearn. And we just want to train, um, we first want to download this these two CSV files from, um, from Kaggle, which is this and this. Uh, I'm also going to link this whole file. Uh, on github so you can just go check my github and download it and they also include this gender submission which is like a sample submission which is almost 50 percent wrong so you don't want to submit this you want to submit uh the file the csv file that you create after pre training this all this data okay. okay so yeah so we just have um a bunch of uh taking in data from reading data from these CSV files, um, and as you can see, I'm just going to scroll down a bit. So, yeah, so the data has been split into two groups, which is the training set, which is train.csv. And, uh, your training, your training set should be used to build your machine learning models. Uh, and also it should be, um, it should provide the outcome for each passenger, whether they survived or not. And yeah, so let's just go ahead and start with the other stuff. 
So as you can see over here, we have the percent, uh, age, embarked, fare, cabin. We want to take all of this data into consideration, family size. Uh, let me just try to, okay, so part, so what part is, is it's a data set that defines family relations. Uh, and we have, let's see if there's some other ones. So is anything else that might, I might need to explicate. Okay, I'm probably just gonna start going down. Okay, so SIBSP, which is SIB, uh, SIB SP. So what that basically is, it's a number of siblings and slash spouses aboard the Titanic. And yeah, so we can just scroll a bit more down. Okay, so now I want to get into missing data. If I can find that missing, let me just control F. Control F this. Mm, missing. Okay, so as you can see over here, wait, no, let's go up. Yeah, so we're, we're basically filling in the missing data and so we can actually see the percent of missing data uh through a feature called missing data train underscore d underscore df and then using that dot matplot.lib so when you run this code we're basically gonna get okay error name did i okay well yo i just did some dumb stuff what did i do okay there we go I don't know what I did there, but it just stopped working. So you can see the percent of missing data by the feature. So we got the we got three um three x values. So which is cabin age and embark, and we can actually see the missing data by that feature. And we can also see this the percent of missing data by the feature. We can talk. We have all these different variables, which is pretty cool. And uh, let's let me go more in depth now. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about filling in this missing data, data, um, with all of, with all of these terms that I just uh, talked about before. So you're basically just gonna you're basically just gonna uh, fill it in with the drop column function, and yeah, you're basically just gonna do train underscore df dot drop and just drop all of these. Uh, variables into into that and as you can see when I ran the code you can see all of the um, NAND values for train data and test data um, so it's pretty cool okay okay so now we're gonna really get into the engineering part of it so okay hmm. So, so basically we're creating a new feature, which is a, basically a title for all the passenger names, as you can see in the graph, as of in the graph. Um, yeah, so I think this is all self-explanatory for the X values when you're actually training the data. Um, okay, let's actually get into the model now, because I'm kind of wasting a lot of time talking about this stuff. So let's actually get into the model. Okay. Um, okay, so right now this is logistic, we're going to use logistic regression and so we're basically going to use logistic regression, k nearest neighbors, support vector machines, a naive bias classifier, decision tree, random forest, linear discriminant analysis, ADA boost classifier, and lastly we're going to use the gradient um, boost boosting classifi classifier uh, and yeah so I'm pretty confident about the first five um, first five models but the last three it did take me a lot of it did, did require me a lot of help to actually use those models so that's why I'm gonna try to go in depth of those last three models but yeah so basically for the logistic regression you're basically just gonna you know, use this code. Um, I mainly use this code from my previous uh, regression ML from watching tutorials of like tech dot uh, tech with Tim, 
for like basic like really beginner stuff and you know just taking taking code from there and just like uh, fitting it into this uh, model right here and yeah next is the random forests so what random forest really is is it's like it's like a classifier that takes a bunch of variables and it just classifies it into this tree type function which basically branches out into many uh many different um like uh classification methods and it's pretty useful for uh mainly classifying the accuracy and yeah and then we got support factor machines which is uh, basically, uh, you, it takes like a bunch of points and it just like groups them up together, which is pretty cool. And then we got K nearest neighbors, which mm -hmm. it, which it finds is the points nearest neighbors and groups it up. Which K nearest neighbors is I think it's unsupervised, and then K clustering is supervised. But we're not going to use a supervised. I mean, it's the opposite. K near K nearest neighbors is uh, supervised and k clustering is unsupervised but we're not using k clustering for this then we got the decision tree uh, which basically takes the validated score uh this prints a validated score of like how the decision tree uh, did so basically we're just gonna fit the model with the x and y training data and x and y test data which is pretty cool i like I like this. Uh, okay, now this is the tricky stuff. So it it actually looks easy, but when you think about it, it's kind of hard to manage imagine it in your brain. So so basically, this thing to name. I'm just searching this up to make sure I'm talking about it in the right way. Okay, let me just. Okay, so gradient gradient boosting uh, in Python or GBT is it's like a, a parameter tuning algorithm used in Python to understand uh, the the bias um, bias variance trade off in machine learning of gradient boosting, which is which looks pretty complicated, honestly. And I think this is used only for, I'm not sure if this is really used for the finance sector, sector for like risk management or uh, money laundering uh, prevention. I'm not even sure, but I'm gonna probably research that after this video. And then we got random forest classifiers. I'm pretty sure this is unsupervised. Yeah. And that's basically it. And then we just wanna obviously print out our best score and then we uh, wanted to screen all this data and then yeah so basically we're gonna uh, use all these models and we're gonna find the highest accuracy from all of these models for x and y for both train and test data and then we're gonna we're gonna basically put that into a csv file so we can submit it uh to kaggle and yeah that's the end of this video um I'm going to put all uh, this whole code uh, on GitHub uh, on my public repository and uh, it's going to be linked in the description if you want to um, go ahead and look at this code and probably use it for your own submission at uh, your first Kaggle competition and uh, yeah that's it peace out.